Hi, my name is Tim Lennon. I'm the CTO of the Drupal Association, and I'm here to give the monthly Drupal.org update. Um, we thought it would be good to try out a video format for giving you our update on all the work that we've been able to do as the Drupal Association engineering team over the course of September. Um, all of this work has been enabled by our very generous supporting partners. It's their support that makes it possible for any of this work to get done. The funding from our supporting partners directly supports the Drupal.org engineering team. So I'm personally grateful for um, everything that they have enabled um, and all the great work that we've been doing. The first update that I'd like to give is about issue forks and merge requests on Drupal.org. So back in 2018, we announced that we were moving the contributor tools on Drupal.org over to GitLab, and we've done that through a phased rollout process. So initially, we moved over all of the repositories where the code was hosted, but it was sort of a transparent plus behind the scenes feature. Then we enabled code viewing and code review tools in GitLab, um, and we've been enabling additional features ever since. So the last major effort has been to turn on the ability to um, work in GitLab workspaces to make an issue fork, uh, to do your work directly in the GitLab UI, and then create a merge request and tie that all into the existing Drupal.org issue queues. Um, so starting actually just after DrupalCon Global, we began the beta process uh, for issue forks and merge requests. So we've had more than 150 contributed projects that have been using it in the beta test period, and a number of people using it in core issues as well. So I'm super pleased to announce that we're gonna be taking it alive across all projects and all core issues on November 10th of this year um, and going out of beta. So um, that should be a really great enhancement for recruiting uh, new folks into the community and for making contribution easier for people who are used to the sort of merge request, pull request workflow. Um, it should also be easier for uh, less code savvy contributors who are going in to add either small spelling corrections or doc block updates or things of that nature um, to do so without having to use local command line tools or uh, anything like that. So it's really great. Uh, in addition to that, for core issues specifically, we've partnered with Tugboat QA and we're offering uh, live previews of the uh, merge request code uh, in a spun up Drupal instance uh, for every core issue as well. So that's gonna be a really great uh, addition, and we're looking forward to getting feedback from our core contributors about how that's supporting their work. The second item I'd like to update you all on is the Lazy Load Initiative. So you may have seen something about this on Twitter, uh, but basically um, the Drupal Association has partnered with Google to focus on uh, improving performance of Drupal and thus performing performance of the web overall. So for our first foray into this collaboration, we decided to focus on some low-hanging fruit. So lazy loading, as you probably know, uh, is an HTML attribute that can be applied to images and actually a couple other kinds of uh, HTML tags uh, and lets the browser decide, okay, we can load these images last during the page load or we can even choose not to load them until they're in the scroll window. Um, so this creates a fast um, uh, first content full paint for web pages. Um, and we've been able to uh, enable that for all image handling by default in core. And that's been committed to core. So we're celebrating the success of that initiative. It's going to be released in Drupal 9.1, uh, which comes out December 2nd of this year. Uh, the third update that I'd like to talk about today is Composer 2 support for Drupal.org's packagist endpoint. So uh, as you know, Drupal.org maintains a Composer endpoint for all of the Drupal projects that are hosted on D.O. So that's, there's more than 40,000 D.O hosted projects in the contrib space plus core. Um, and um, obviously people have been using Composer version one to manage Drupal sites throughout kind of the Drupal eight and early Drupal nine release history. The uh, Composer team has been working on Composer two, which has incredible improvements in speed and efficiency. Um, for running Composer, which will make it work much better in shared hosting environments for smaller users, make it easier for international users to just run Composer in their local development environments, and basically just make that whole process faster and easier as well. So I'm super pleased to report that updating Drupal.org's endpoints to support Composer 2 is already complete, much way ahead of schedule. Um, so you can already use all of those advanced Composer 2 features when you're building your Drupal sites. Um, and they should all work for you just fine and, uh, and make that development process easier. Um, 
Another update that I'd like to give, in September, we had a second Auto Updates Contribution Week. So this is where the Drupal Association brought together Drupal Core contributors, contributors from Typo3, uh, and contributors from Joomla to all collaborate on the update framework. Uh, that's actually an acronym, TUF, um, and implementing a version of the update framework in PHP. So this is an enhancement to the way we securely deliver updates and kind of a foundational piece of the Auto Updates initiative. So this continues the work that we did in the contrib space, uh, sponsored by the European Commission last year, and is on the road of adding this uh, auto updates feature into Drupal core. Um, finally, um, we're going to begin doing some new work uh, to help onboard contributors to the Drupal project. So we want to begin acting as matchmakers between people out there um, maybe you who are watching this uh, message who are interested in contributing more to, to the Drupal project, but maybe don't know where to get involved, what initiatives are on the table, um, or just how to get started. So um, we've done a little bit with some initial partners to sort of pilot this process, but we'd love to work with more folks. So if you yourself are interested in doing more contribution, or if you have an end user client who you think might actually be interested in contributing back to Drupal, we'd love it if you'd reach out to us. You can contact me, uh, tim at association.drupal.org, um, and we'd be happy to uh, take it from there and get started. So those are all our updates from September from the Drupal Association and engineering team. Again, I want to thank you all for your support. It's what made all of this possible, and I'm looking forward to getting in touch with you again next month.